Hey, what's good? Welcome to the Strategic Scale Show, where we sit down with real businesses who are making anywhere from $250,000 a year to a million to $5 million per year or more, and they're looking to scale things up while actually working less. In today's episode, I dive deep with an amazing entrepreneur who's already making multiple millions in her business, and she's looking at how I scale, how do I scale things up without working more hours because she's already at a point where she's working two or three days a week versus seven days a week like she previously was before we actually dove in. This is a private client, so we're gonna have a quite different conversation, but you're gonna get to get some insights on stuff that we've already covered up until now, the results she got from that, and how we're gonna build onto that. So let's go ahead and jump into the episode. I know you're gonna get a lot out of it. Let's get to it. So, Carwana, <laughs> tell everybody who you are in your own words and what you do. Yep, I am Dr. Carwana D. Irving, and I'm a government contracts expert, and I help high-level entrepreneurs actually grow and scale to multiple six, multiple seven figures um, in their business. Nice. So, tell everybody, like, well, so kind of walk me through, like, how did you got to this point? So, years ago, <laughs> when yeah. I first started in business, I had a multimedia firm and doing pr uh, production, video production and photography services. Yeah. But like most small business owners, I went the long, wrong route that yeah. I was taught, um, following the myths that we are all told that it's gonna take two to five years to build a business. So I really believed that. Mm -hmm. And so it really did take me two to five years or seven years beyond mm -hmm. um, to struggle in yeah. business. And um, I got tired of trying to figure out how, how I was gonna make ends meet as an entrepreneur and one of the business owners that I had started freelancing for, um, he just happened to be a black billionaire. And I was really curious about how he came from the same community as me. We went to the same church. I didn't even know how successful he really was until I started mm. freelancing for him. And he was him. going to the church the whole time. And he was going to the church the whole time. Mm. And so I asked him like, how did you really do it? And he told me it was government contracts that helped him. And it took me a while to figure it out. But once I did, I was able to double my revenue um, in just 28 days for mm. working. And so that's when I discovered that government contracting was a real thing. Mm. Um, and it was like the biggest kept secret that I think all small business owners should take a look at. Got it. So you yeah. was like, let me just start sharing the good news. Yeah. Mm. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So black billionaire in the church. Yeah. I'm assuming no ice, no big change. No ice. No... In fact, he was the armor bearer of the pastor. So mm. he was a real humble person. You would never even know that he was a billionaire until wow. I start seeing huge, humongous checks right. come through his door in the office. And I'm like, what is this dude doing? So right. I just asked him, you know, usually people don't want to ask, right. you know, like, what are you doing? How are you doing it? Cause that's like, mm, that's just what you don't do, right? Mm. right? Um, but I was just like, so sick and tired of trying to figure out if this customer is going to say yes. And if they going to go with somebody else or what is it going to be like? I have customers some months and then for several months I won't. And yeah. so I just needed more consistent sustainability um, as an entrepreneur. So I just asked him and yeah. he told me um, he didn't show me how to do it. So it took me a little over a year and a half to like do it the wrong way. But right. I was taking action right. and uh, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, I'm going to figure this thing out. So right. I learned from my mistakes. And the first time um, that I secured my first contract, it was seventy thousand mm. dollars for 28 days of work. But those 28 days was actually 56 hours because it was only two hours a day. Gotcha. And so I went from working 50 to 60 hours as an entrepreneur, burning myself out, not making money for $30,000 a year okay. to doubling that with just 56 hours of work. And so I just kind of started doubling down um, on the success that I saw the okay. first time. And, at, and initially, because I had never seen that type of money um, before, for the little bit of work that I did, mm -hmm. um, I really didn't believe it. You know, I thought that they had made a mistake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so I was like, wait, let me hurry up and cash this check because I don't know if they're gonna come back and say we meant 7,000, mm -hmm. but it was real. And Love so it. before I knew it, I had landed multiple contracts simultaneously and significantly grew to like a multi six, six figure um, business in a very short period of time. I love it. I love it. I love it. So let's dive in. So, <laughs> so what would you say? So current revenue, what's tarp, what, we, what are we looking to get to? Yeah. And then what's the biggest scale constraint that we can dive into? I know we do a lot of work together. Right. We work together personally <laughs> in the way we just came out to CEO yeah. camp. Mm -hmm. So what would you say at this point, where we are, where you're looking to go and what's the biggest scale constraint you want to work through? So real quick, I know I just mentioned the CEO camp and you're probably going to hear me mention the CEO camp quite a few times during this episode. Carwan is actually a private client of ours and um, you're going to hear some of the success that she's been able to have in her business. And we, one of the things that we do um, with our private clients is what we call the CEO camp. And we do this quarterly where we either meet up in Atlanta or somewhere around the world. We do international, we do across the U.S., just depending. And we work for 
two days and we go deep dive into your business. And you're in the room with other individuals who are making millions of dollars already in their business and are looking to get to the next level. So it's an amazing experience. I really can't explain um, what happens in the room, but if you're the type of person and you, had a business, you got a business and you're making 250, half a million, a million dollars plus per year, and you're looking to scale things up, you may be a good fit for the next CEO camp. And we love to have a conversation to see if you can get some value from it and if you would contribute some value from it as well. It's not a mastermind, um, so we don't like to call it a mastermind, um, but it's really where individuals kind of get hands-on assistance with growing and scaling their business to the next level. So if you want to get more details about the CEO camp, here's what you can do. Just send me a text directly, and I'm gonna give you the number right now. I wanna pull it up so I can give you the exact number. I want you to text the word CEO camp, all one word, CEO camp, and I want you to text that to 912-741-3917. That's 912-741-3917. And just text the word CEO camp, CEO camp, all one word, and I'll reach back out and we'll get you all the details to see, you know, if it's a fit. All right, let's jump back into the episode while we're Yeah, here. so right now um, I have a multi multiple seven-figure business mm -hmm. now. Um, last year we closed that over 2.8 million. Love it. Um, this year it's a little bit less, but it's like one um, right now to date it's like 1.5 million. Yeah. Um, but my goal this year was to hit five. Okay. So there are some constraints, and right now some of those constraints include just the market. Mm -hmm. I believe For you sure. know, of course, a little bit has to do with unable to get people finance, but also um, just like I say, sales and closing, mm -hmm. right? Because having people available to take enough calls in order to close more people is definitely key. Um, so, and I'm also trying to, I, I rely heavily upon like a five day challenge business model. Mm -hmm. And so, because that's once a month, you have a huge cash influx once a month, but yeah. sometimes I travel. Yeah. So at least two to three months out of the year, I'm not having those challenges. So um, that becomes like a bottleneck for, for yeah. the business. So what, I, what I'm working on right now mm -hmm. is finding a way to automate it so yeah. that it doesn't require my presence yeah. in order to generate that type of cash flow. Okay, perfect. So, uh, yeah, okay, good, perfect. So what So what would you say if we was to like, what would you say, okay, if we could walk away with this specific thing, what would be ideal if you walk away with this specific game plan? Anything specific? Anything specific? That we can dig into. That we can dig into. Well, um, I really have, I really want to dive into rolling out additional offers. Okay. So my baseline offer that I, um, is 55,000. Yep. Um, but I know I do have a $200,000 offer yep. that I have not just yet sold. Okay. So how to take something that actually works and then add a value around it to yep. increase the price, which will help me reach my financial goals Makes easier, sense. faster. What are you, so right now, so, cause I know you got a book as well. Yeah. Are you running traffic to that? I am not. So I actually was just writing notes like I need to run traffic to my book funnel, mm. but I don't. So um, I've probably sold about maybe about $5,000 in books this year okay. alone. Um, just not even intentionally, just people look me up, they go buy the book on automated or maybe through an email, they hear about the book and they go buy it. But, um, but I wanna be more intentional yep. in including all the other products and offers that I have. You're probably like, whoa, 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 Michael, slow down. If you're enjoying the show so far, you may be wondering, how do you actually become a guest? Now, this isn't a platform where anybody can just get on. You gotta be in a specific area of your business where we can really do a solid deep dive. If you wanna be a guest on an upcoming episode, all you gotta do is go to strategicscaleguest.com. Strategicscaleguest.com. There is an application process, so go over there, answer a couple simple questions, watch the quick video that I have there, answer a couple simple questions, and if you meet the criteria, our team will reach out to you and we'll get it scheduled and we can figure out if you're gonna come to our office where we do a deep dive or we come to your office. So go ahead, strategicscaleguest.com. Let's get back into the show. How much is the book? I know who's at the CEO camp. We talked about the other yeah. offers. We didn't even talk about. Yeah, the book. we didn't. Yeah, mm, interesting. So it's twenty nine ninety five. Twenty nine ninety five. What's yeah. what's the, what's the fun? Let me turn the um thing. What's the where do they go to buy the book? So don't duck the government book dot com. Let me pull that up. All right. So they go here. Uh huh. And then scroll down. Boom. They click on CS yes, send me a copy. They enter the e details. And they can check out right there. Yep. Boom. And we haven't, and then once they, once they buy this, what's on the, what's on, what's the upsell on the next page? So the upsell is a challenge ticket. Okay. The upsell is a challenge, yep. challenge ticket. And then for how much? For 90, starts at 97. Starts at 97. Mm -hmm. And, but we're not running traffic to this. 
Not yet. Any reason at this point? Well, I had if initially before I had the actual book funnel, I was selling them on a site called Equit. Okay. But it didn't give me the ability to do upsells on Equit. So mm. only recently, probably within the last quarter, I've switched it over to this um, actual book funnel with the upsell. Gotcha. So I just haven't gotten around to running traffic. Running traffic just yet. Okay, cool. So, cause I, and I know the, the biggest goal, it sounds like, cause I know you said, like, let's say for example, if you don't have a challenge then, cause that's a spike in revenue, but how do we create more yeah, consistent more revenue? Consistent. Yeah. So since you got this, since you got this book, this asset already, so let's, let's say for example, cause I know we talked about the ecosystem at the CEO camp, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just say for example, what, what other front end you got? So like I have, any like free giveaways or what else you got on the front end? So I have a free uh, training about, you know, getting started in the government contracting What's the uh, space. That? TrillionDollarGovernmentContracts.com. Trillion. Dollar Trillion. <laughs> All right, boom. So they go here. Yep. Click on this. Name, email, phone number. They opt in. And watch the video. Watch the videos. It's about a twenty minute. And then book a call. Video and book a call. Got it. Is any traffic running to this one right now? Yes, but but very minimal. Okay. So um, this used to be the main driver for mm -hmm. revenues until the five day challenge model came. Um, because this one is harder to convert because it's just a 20 minute video of the, the considering price point, the price the point. Yeah. Makes sense. So I minimize, minimize the amount of, um, ad spend that I have to this funnel. That makes sense. Yeah. And then any other ones? Are these the two main front ends? Those are the two main front ends. Um, and then I have the GovCon challenge directly that I, I spend most of the ads there. On that. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and those run at Evergreen or do you, Evergreen. do you pause them? Mm -mm. Just keep it running? Evergreen. Mm -hmm. I, I got keep it. Keep it so, and so they, so. And the gov and the challenge is govconchallenge.com. Govcon. Cool, cool, cool. All right, perfect. All right, cool. So, so I think two. I think. And then you got you got the sales team. I know you're in the process of getting the sales team right. Right. All right, yeah. cool. So I think a couple things. Right, a couple opportunities. So let's just say from the ecosystem standpoint. And so let's just say. We got three front end assets. So this is challenge, this is book, mm -hmm. and this is video. Yeah. Right, video opt in. So I think through so I think a couple things. So let's say for example you're driving traffic to all three of these with ads. Mm -hmm. And you can figure we can figure out like the allocation. Mm -hmm. Because I think once they come by this book, then of course they get an opportunity to buy a challenge ticket. Yep. Right? And then they opt in here. When they come here and they this obviously is a challenge ticket. Mm -hmm. And then right here it's a video to book a call. To book a call. Mm -hmm. Right. So as we so let's say for example somebody comes to the book page, right? Mm -hmm. And if they come to this page but they don't buy, we can still pixel them and retarget them here. Okay. Right, so we can take so we can pixel them and we, we, we target them here to go opt in here, and then we still got them in the funnel. Mm -hmm. And then ideally, we don't necessarily want them to book a call immediately right here anyway, mm -hmm. because they're not quite ready. They're not quite ready yet. Mm -hmm. But the beautiful thing is like I know we talked about the CEO camp is like us having that ad funnel in place. Yeah. Right. So now we build out let's call it a series of seven different videos. Mm -hmm. I know you got a ton of testimonials. So let's just say some of these are you teaching or you like showing like, some, like hey, I just jumped on, the, jumped on the call. Let me show you this, blah, 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 blah. And then that's pushing them to book a call, mm -hmm. right? Or you could even be having some content videos that's pushing them to go register for the challenge, mm -hmm. right? And then the people who buy the book come here but don't buy the challenge ticket, we can obviously retarget them to, to, to register for the challenge mm -hmm. and we can also have them in this sequence seeing video content because i know we talked about this before did, did it do we already set the video ass up not no, just yet not just yet perfect <laughs> so then because now this kind of feeds that ecosystem because now because i know the challenge the challenge works amazing because one of the reasons it works amazing because it's seven hours worth of content well more than that really right yeah it's like, so it's about 90 minutes a day 90 minutes a day days. so five days so that's what that's three, three days, six. That's so it's about nine, nine hours. hours. Right. Yeah. So it's like even then, so let's say, for example, they've gone through this ad funnel. So now by the time they come to the challenge, they've already consumed X amount of your content as yeah. well. 
Mm -hmm. So since we got these three assets on the front, and now you're generating daily revenue, and since you got the sales team, is they're actually calling all these book buyers, mm -hmm. moving them through the process, and then we got all these opt-ins, because you're taking name, email, and phone number, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So, and then they calling all these buyers as well. And then on your challenge page, they click here, then they opt-in, and then this is step one and then step two. Yep. So even when if, if they put name, email, phone number, but don't check out, then you got the sales team calling them as well. The I don't have it right now, but I will. The biggest, the biggest yeah. thing is like, you might have what, the sales team? I don't have them calling them if they don't right, right, right. go all the way through. But like, this is a big opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because, and then, them, of course, have, you already know we didn't talk about this a few times, but like having people who going to really hit the phone. Yep. Because that's going to lead to like yep. daily sales. Mm -hmm. Because now you got, because when they jump on the phone, we got a... Obviously, a two hundred thousand dollar offer. Mm -hmm. You got a fifty five thousand uh, dollar offer. Mm -hmm. You got a twenty thousand dollar offer. Mm -hmm. uh, a ten thousand one. Yeah. And a two thousand. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then worst case scenario, they can sell them the book. For tw yep. For twenty for twenty nine. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, or they can sell them a book plus a challenge ticket. Yeah. For one fifty or uh, whatever I think that's yeah it's like one one thirty. Yeah. Or VIP is what? Two, I know you got a two ninety seven and a four ninety seven, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So you can buy a challenge ticket from anywhere from well, well a book and a challenge ticket from anywhere from one thirty to about seven hundred. Yep. Now they got them in a the challenge, and now this salesperson is still con is still tied to them mm -hmm. to get them to show up for the challenge and be nurturing them through the process. Does that make sense? It does. Because like you mentioned, the market is like when we can actually just nurture them through this whole process, yeah, it becomes more powerful. Because you got you got a Facebook group too, right? I do, yes. So yeah, so now it's like these people who opt in, we're getting them into the Facebook group. So now we can nurture them there. You do like a weekly live? What, what are you doing like? So kind of, sort of, okay. but not really. Got so, gotcha. <laughs> so I used to do a weekly live, but I just kind of pulled back because I'm working on making more valuable content gotcha. that will um, basically get millions of views. And right. so I'm, I'm in training right okay. now. Gotcha. Um, so I can know, like, format-wise, how do what I create? content correct? Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then you still, you still do your YouTube content as well? Mm -hmm. How often do you do that? So that is. That's the content yeah, you're talking about? that's the content that I'm talking about. Perfect, yeah. perfect, perfect. So, yeah, so I think, so I think, so one thing right off the top is having these three mechanisms on the front. And I know you obviously know this is going to get you a certain amount of ROAS. Mm -hmm. And then just testing to see how the book funnel. Yeah. Up. And then, and then the cool thing is, like, not even really... It doesn't really matter ultimately how many people buy the book. I mean, it's great when they buy it, mm -hmm. but it's like us really feeding and creating your audience who's open to the other stuff. Yeah. Because by them watching, even with them watching the video ad that promotes this, mm -hmm. you're building this audience up. So now it's like an invisible kind of list. So now you can actually market to everything else that you got in the funnel yeah. to those individuals. Yeah, and I, th I think that's like one of the things that I have never done was. Um, market everything that I have. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've always just stuck to the premium, you know, yep. the premium program, but nobody knows about like the the DIY courses. Nobody knows about the just getting started boot yep. camps. Nobody knows about those things. And so, um, yeah, I, I'm trying to be more intentional right yep. now, especially with training the sales team yep. on how to properly um evaluate a phone call to see which they actually best match gotcha. for instead of yeah. just pushing everybody into the, into, same, program. Into the same program that makes yeah. sense that makes sense and then because you got it because i know you got an event coming up in dallas too yeah so even with that it's like now you're building out this warm audience so mm -hmm. now even when you roll out tickets now you can actually go in and have your media buyer go in and like launch an ad mm -hmm. specifically for people who then went to this page regardless yeah. if they bought or not People yep. who went to this page, regardless if they bought or not, went to this page, regardless if they bought or not. Mm -hmm. So now we can market them because these people are already super familiar with you. Yep. And then you got your email list, but you're going to have a greater chance of getting in front of people with running ads to them based on them being a part of your Pixel audience. Yeah. That, that makes sense? It does. Yeah. So what questions you got on that? Um, nothing. <laughs> None. Nothing? Yeah, I mean, it's clear. It's super clear. Cool. So we got, so what, what would you say action steps are for this particular part? Um, right. Well, right now I'm allocating um, probably about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a month on challenge ads. Okay. So um, just kind of thinking about, do I want to add additional ad budgets for the book funnel um, and the 
cold call funnel or just kind of reallocate what I'm already spending on ads to include those things. Got it. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So, yeah. So great, great point. So, so I guess once figuring that out, then you can figure out, all right, how much do we want to allocate towards those? Um, and you, and it's like, cause like 20,000 a month, that's what, 20,000, what's that about uh, 1,500 a day or something like that? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. It's, no, it's, it's, a actually, it's, like, it's a little, so it's like a thousand, so a thousand a day is like 30,000. So it's really like 750 a day or something like that. It kind of fluctuates. Kind of fluctuates. Yeah, because sometimes we do actually spend a thousand dollars a day. The closer to the challenge, we actually crank it up. Crank it up a little that bit. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I think that's figuring out how we want to, because like you can start like super low budget here. Mm -hmm. and super low budget here just to kind of see how it works mm -hmm. and then because the end goal is just to feed that ecosystem yeah. to get people working through that process so now when they show up for the challenge whether it's live or virtual mm -hmm. they're already super warm to you anyway and now they're showing up to wonder how they can they go deeper with you because yeah. they've been seeing you all over the place yeah because i know you're already doing ad roll and all that different type of stuff with retargeting yep we so just kind of really started that um yep. but ultimately like all things kind of leads back to the challenge <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> it does exactly yeah. exactly so now we we're warming people up we're here mm -hmm. book buyers or people who just went to the page mm -hmm. and we got people here who watch, went to this page and opted in and then warming them up and putting them into the, the ad right. funnel yeah. right that eventually pushes them to register for the challenge because you know this is going to be a big conversion event yep and then even those who went through this this and this pushing them to dallas because i'm sure dallas can probably be like a in the Roman event as well. Yeah, it is. So then pushing them into Dallas. And again, these people are already like being super warm on who you are. And then you're rolling out your whole content strategy, which will feed this, and this will feed eyeballs on your content. Okay. That's pretty straightforward, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty straightforward. What, what other, what other, what else? Anything else? Hey, what's up, real quick, if you're watching this episode, which you clearly are, and you're like, okay, this is amazing. If you're a business owner right now watching this and you're making 30K to 100K per month, at least, or you're making 1 million or 5 million, and you're looking to get to 10, 15, 20 million and beyond, and you're like, how do I strategically scale my business without burning out and without sacrificing the thing that matters, all the things that matters, I actually put together a special bonus gift for podcast listeners only. So if you go to scale, strategicscalegift.com, that's strategic scale gift.com. We're going to hook you up with some tools, some strategies, some systems that you can apply into your business immediately to help you strategically scale your business without burning out so you can impact more people and scale to the million dollar business, to the million dollar mark and beyond. Go get that right now. Strategicscalegift.com. And let's get back to the show. I'm trying to think of, like, is there anything but aside from like what type, like, because with the retargeting content, I'm just trying to see what would be the best content for like fueling people, like warming them up, like as far as retarget, should it has, should it all have a call to action or should it be kind of like a mix of just value content? Great question. So basically how, so, uh, so, so one, one, so a couple types. So, cause I know you got hundreds of testimonials. Mm -hmm. Have you tested um, like carousel testimonial ads? No, I haven't. So one I would do is a carousel testimonial ad. And the carousel testimony ad is basically you taking, I think it holds like seven in there, seven or eight testimonials, and you can upload them in there and people can like scan across the show, right? So carousel testimony ad, that'll be one of those in there. Value add. Yep. Okay. And then you got, um, and the call to action on there is just click here to schedule a call. And then, or click it up, we want to push them to the next step, right? Um, so carousel ad. And then like case study video. So these case study could be like a, like, a, like a quick interview, kind of like we did the other day. Yeah. And I, I can give you a script for that. So you take in some of your clients and you don't, you probably, have you done some interviews with clients? I have, but yeah, it would be good to have an actual script because I don't usually know what to say. <laughs> I got you. I got you on the script. Yeah. So case study interviews. Mm -hmm. And then we put them in there and we typically run the needs at like a dollar to two dollars a day. Mm -hmm. Something like super low budget. And then you can either do like, um, let's we don't call this behind the scenes. So behind the scenes is more like, hey, I just jumped off a challenge or I just jumped off a coaching call and I share it with them X, Y, Z. Let me walk you through what I walked them through uh -huh. so you can take it and go implement. Yeah. So then it's like, all right, if you like this and you like to have a call with me and my team about how we can actually help you do this, click the link to schedule a call. Okay. So like you showing them in real time, you know what's going on. You honestly could even take some of your valuable clips from your challenge uh -huh. and do it as well. So like yeah. some of those big talking points, yep. take them and put them in here. 
So it's like clips from challenge. And then even some of your content that you already got, like on IG and YouTube and stuff like that, yeah. you can take some of that and put it in there. So I'm just going to say existing clips that perform well. And you just put ads behind it to wrap it up. And then um, also some direct, some direct CTA ads. So like, hey, if you've been watching this video, you probably been on my challenge, you probably bought a book, you probably seen some of my content, you probably seen me speak, mm -hmm. but for some reason we ain't working together or you haven't booked a call yet. Here's why you want to go ahead and book a call right now. Okay. And then number one is this, number two is this, number three is this. Go schedule a call and then pushing them to go schedule a call. That's good. Um, so one, two, three, That's four, six. five, six. And That's then six. like um, media stuff maybe? Me definitely the media stuff. Because you got all those clips from when the media had you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so okay. all of that. So all that and pushing that all in here. So media, what's so a lot? I know right now you got, what all the media platforms you got? ABC, NBC, mm -hmm. um, bunch of others. <laughs> yep, yep. So yeah. put, putting that all in there. Mm -hmm. Because now once they touch any one of these pages, regardless of what they do, mm -hmm. They automatically start. They automatically go into this and start seeing start this. Seeing those things. And they just like, okay, why am I seeing her all over the place? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? And we just continue to feed them. And then this this group is growing every day, which feeds this, which ends up feeding the sales team, because now they're gonna have leads to reach out to every day, outside of your existing leads. Because I know you already got like thousands of leads, so they can already dive into who them bought challenges and book tickets. So even with your five thousand, you say so you said. 5,000 book sales this year or, mm -hmm. or 5,000 book sales book sales mm -hmm. so who so nobody's calling them right now right no <laughs> yeah, yeah so we want to get like yeah nobody's calling so you got 5,000 book sales yep. this year mm -hmm. nobody's even calling nobody's calling them yeah 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 so we want to have them calling them like right and it's real straight to the point right it's literally like write that down <laughs> yeah it's literally like they can start calling them today yeah you're right you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. like hey uh Hey, is such and such from Dr. Carwana's office. We see you bought the book on XYZ. Wanted to see how you're coming along with that and also get you access to some more resources that we have access to. Yeah. You got two minutes to chat and they're like, yeah. Now they kind of go through a whole process. And I, I can get you a script for that too. So would that be like for a setter or a closer? Um, I would give it to both. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, cause you really want to, a big mistake I made early on when building the sales team mm -hmm. was like the closers got comfortable. So yep. the closers sat back and would just wait for the setters I have to do the their job. Pro I have the same issue. That's, mm -hmm. that's like one of the biggest issues for the past two years, mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, that I've been trying to overcome. Yep, because your strength, like ours, is generating leads. Yeah. Like you don't have no issue generating leads, yeah. getting applications. So they'll sit back and just wait yep. instead of like hunting. Mm -hmm. So as we've rebuilt it, the, the, the Army Roman Department, it's been like, the whole you got to hunt as well yeah. like yeah you're going to get some inbounds coming mm -hmm. but part of your role is to hunt you're yeah. you got you have even as an advisor you got a certain set amount that you got to set for yourself okay. especially when you got the, you got five thousand buyers and that's just book buyers yeah. so imagine all the other challenge buyers because you didn't sell how many challenge tickets so um historically to date mm -hmm. well to date um this year 422 challenge cool. tickets this and, year and then last year probably another yeah, I do about six to seven hundred tickets a year. You get what I'm saying? So total, probably more than about six thousand total. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So those are all buyers. So they can literally be hitting them up, and they're like, "Yeah, you didn't buy the fifty-five thousand dollar thing, but well, let me tell you about these other programs yeah. that we got to offer as well." Mm -hmm. I think I just need to like make that a um a part of their must do. Must do. Otherwise, they're gonna continue to wait for me to hand them. 100 percent and they're just gonna wait <laughs> yeah they just gotta wait so yeah just gonna I, think, wait. I think um especially with come i have new um closers coming on yep. just make it a part of what they must do that's part of the culture yeah. it's like hey if you're if you're mm -hmm. if your calendar isn't filled mm -hmm. your kpi is a hundred dollars a day yeah calling these customers i like that yeah a hundred at least a hundred dollars a day connecting yeah dialing and texting because because yeah. when they don't answer they're like hey i'm such and such from dr kawana's office i wanted to reach out i know you bought the book mm -hmm. want to tell you about some other new resources i can get you access to from dr kawana like how do you got two minutes to chat yeah and they get on the phone and just kind of go into a triage like hey what made you buy it are you joining it so far have you had time to dive in mm -hmm. um, what else you feel like you're missing 
And then they'll start telling me, like, okay, based on what I'm hearing, here's what I'm thinking would be your logical next step. Or, and that may be, well, Dr. Carwani got a challenge coming up. Um, I can actually get you a VIP ticket with her, or a platinum ticket, where yeah. you can actually ask her questions every day. Or Dr. Carwani got um, this, and they're like, well, I saw that I've been to the challenge before, I just saw this offer. And you're like, all right, cool, well, we got some other programs that we can talk about as well. So it's yeah. like, we got the $10,000 offer, mm -hmm. just talking about those specific things. So it's like, that's money on the table right. without no more ads, Leaving without, without ads. A lot more money on the table. Mm -hmm. So you was talking about more or closer? Yep. That right there just gets us closer to the goal. Cause 100%. You have, Cause it's already here. Like mm -hmm. I know that with the email list being like 65,000 people on the email list, people opting in every day. We get like 2,000 opt-ins every single day. Mm -hmm. I mean, not every day, but every month. Yeah, <laughs> every it's single all leads. Month is all leads, so mm -hmm. it's there. So it's just like, I feel like we've been leaving a lot of money on the table because of that yep. missing follow-up system, just having people on the phones Bingo. calling. Bingo, yeah. 100%, mm -hmm. 100%, 100%. So yeah, so them calling, so because you got, almost 10,000 buyers that they can be reaching out to. Yeah. Getting them on the phone and then moving them through the process. And they're like, hey, you need to hunt. True. And then the ones who hunt, you prioritize them when it comes to the inbound bookings. Mm -hmm. Like the ones who hunt it and you showing you the hungriest, when we get inbounds, we're going to prioritize you for the inbounds. Yeah. So do you recommend, so instead of like having calls automatically booked on their calendar to just basically have a setter manage who it goes to based on their level of input, like what they're doing. Yeah, you can, you can definitely do that. You can definitely do that. You can definitely do that. Because cause your next challenge is when? September 23rd, the week of the 23rd. Yeah, and when are you onboarding your new salespeople? Well, they're currently onboarding right now, so okay. they start on Monday. This coming Monday? Yeah. yeah. So they'll be here. So it's like, let's see how y'all hit the ground running. How y'all hit the ground running now going to dictate how much I feed you on the back end for the challenge. Yeah. So how you perform this week? Yeah. And then you see, you be like, hey, look, we might not keep both of y'all. Mm -hmm. We want to see who performs. Yeah. Because technically, you don't you don't necessarily require two. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You're like, hey, look, guys, this is what we're doing. This is a trial period. I want to see which one of y'all make it. Right? Mm -hmm. And let's see how y'all make it over the next week or two leading up to the challenge. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, if both of you kill it, then I'll keep both of y'all. But if not, I'll just take one. Yeah. And then we just make sure you eat, and then we'll do another round of hiring. Okay. So that way they don't think that I'm just home free, and you can say it's like, nah, this is trials. Yep. So you made it through the first phase. You made it through the first phase of hiring. This is the second to yep. kind of see exactly how you perform. Got it. Does that make sense? It does. Yes. Cool. What questions you got on that? None. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um, anything else? I think. I mean. I mean, I got some numbers here, but that's what I mean. I got I wrote down like all of my numbers and I just kind of wanted to, to get an idea of like how I'm doing and okay. what yeah. I can do better. Let's do but that. I think you probably covered it. You know, you pretty pretty much covered what I can do better. OK. So. It's your call. If you're good. I mean, you know, if you want to dive into numbers, yeah, let's dive numbers into it. Guy. OK, yeah, let's so, dive into it. Um, so just year to date spending on ads has been one hundred thousand okay. seven hundred sixty five. 100,765 mm -hmm. on ads. This is year to date. This is nine, eight and a half months. Okay. So, um, year to date, 20,506 leads. 20,506 leads. Mm -hmm. Good. 16,000 of those are coming from directly from ads. 16,000 from ads. The average cost per lead is six point, about $6.22. 622. Uh huh. 622 cost per lead. And then the um, lead to opt-in rate is 10.3%. 10, 10. Lead to opt-in? Yeah. Okay, it's like landing so page. So people, yeah, landing page. Okay, 10%. And then lead to purchase is 4.74%. Lead to purchase. And the lead to purchase of a challenge ticket? So, yeah. Okay. Lead, lead to purchase, yep, of a challenge ticket. Okay. 4.74%. Um, okay. And then cost per challenge lead? Okay. It's different from the cost per lead. So cost per challenge lead is like three hundred three, three hundred dollars and three cents. I mean three hundred three dollars. Three hundred. So to get it, so the cost, so the cost to get a challenge buyer. Yeah. Buyer. It's three hundred three. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And then, oh, but the cold call. This is the reason why I scaled back on cold yep. calls because the cost to get a um a call is a hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. The cost per get a call, cost per call on the cold funnel. On the cold funnel is one hundred and fifty dollars, but those don't usually lead to 
closes. Got it. What percentage, you know? Not even 1%. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, I got it, got it, got it. But, like, typically I have them, like, circling back to the challenge. Got it. If they're not ready to and buy then they end up call. Converting typically. But it's probably because it's, just, it's not enough outbound calls being made as Correct. well. For so, sure. Okay. Yeah. So cost per call, 150 And then what else you got? Um, let me see. What else do I have? Book sales. So I told you book sales. So 466 tickets have been sold. I think we said that. Yep. Um, 466 tickets. Mm -hmm. Out of the 466 tickets, 209 people applied to work with me. We have this year 25 enrollments so far. So that's like a 12% challenge to enroll rate. 12% challenge to enroll. Challenge to enroll. Mm -hmm. Which is incredible. And then 70% um, of the people who enroll for the um, challenge ticket become VIP. And it's 100% of the VIPs. Become, and I buy. Yeah. Really? Yeah, you, not 100% of them, but all the people that end up buying are VIPs. Wow. Yeah. So 70%. 70% of the challenge tickets sold become VIPs. Become VIPs. Mm -hmm. And then the people who take all of the people who bought the program Come from VIP. are from VIP. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's it. That's all I have. <laughs> That's crazy. So, a hundred percent of the buyers are VIP. Yep. Okay. Cool. So for so your so your so you got two hundred and so you're paying three hundred to get a buyer. Mm -hmm. Then the average and you sold how many tickets? Four hundred sixty-six. Four hundred sixty-six. So four hundred sixty-six ticket sales. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then 209 applied, and this is all from the 100,000 ads. Yep. Got it. 100,000 ads been 622 lead, 303 per challenge buyer, and then the average, what percentage take VIP of the ticket buyers? Oh, 70. 70%. 70% take. So, so 70% of the ticket. And you saw how many tickets? 466 to date. So what's that VIP? You you got those numbers? What's I, no. <laughs> you, got so, your, you got your calculator? 326 times 297. So 96,881.4. Perfect. So you pretty much are, you so you almost break even just on ticket sales. I mean just on VIP ticket sales. Yeah. So you be yep. so you so going into the challenge you are already profitable. Yeah. Just on ticket sales. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, I mean I mean you got a machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because so now and then twelve percent on the back end enroll, mm -hmm. um, and then yeah. So like the biggest thing is like us getting the sales team to like buckle down yeah. because I because like if you look at twenty five enroll year to date, right? Yeah, and then we got we got four sixty six, and this is just ticket buyers. Mm -hmm. So twenty five, so minus twenty five. So what's that? One, four, four, 441 challenge ticket buyers, and then another 5,000 book buyers. That could be called. Yeah. Yeah. So even if we could, even if we yeah. just get 10% into them and then something else, on the, even on the low end, that's another times, so what's that, 10%? It'd be 40, let's call it 40. So even if we get 40 of them into the $2,000 offer, couple, yeah. that's another one, two, three, four, Eight, that's another eighty thousand right there, with no extra spend, and then we can take that and dump it back into ads yeah. to like feed more people through there. Yeah. So it, I mean, that's what it's, it sounds like, and but you just confirmed that really we already have um, great leads coming mm -hmm. in, um, good a fair conversion rate, yep. um, but we're what we're dropping the ball is like on following up yep. with people that follow through uh-huh and an another thing is when people when they opt in so let me go back here so when they when they register uh, as part of their onboarding are you getting are you like finding out like what industry they're in revenue are you asking those questions we part ask of onboarding? the revenue but not what industry okay cool but you're getting the revenue yeah, as part of the onboarding mm -hmm. got it. and then you you are you segmenting those not really not well yeah actually i do i segment i do i do i segment it by above 50 or below 50, but I feel like because the average person that um, that needs to qualify for funding for mm -hmm. our program needs to at least be making about 150,000, I think I need to just change those numbers. Yeah. 
um, from 50 because we just kind of wanted to know. Is it 50 or less? Yeah, 50 or less. But, so, yeah. So, you could yeah. do like 0 to 10, 10 to 25, 25 to 50, and then 50 plus. Yeah. Because then that way the team can kind of go in and count me in like um segment. They can they can prioritize them based on all right, hit the fifty thousand plus people first, hit the twenty five to fifty people second, yep. ten to, yeah. And then these other ones that's lower, mm -hmm. you can just put them into something nurturing. Yeah. To like for them to buy the book and you know stuff like that to go now because they can take the stuff in the book, because they need to be at. One hundred and fifty plus for the fifty five thousand dollar offer, right? Yeah. Before, the two thousand. Mm -hmm. Is there a revenue for them to be for the $2,000 program or the no. $2,000 program? No, but preferably, the reason why I prefer to work with six-figure owners because usually those are the ones that are action takers. Because yeah. You can't grow a six-figure business accidentally without taking action. For sure. And so um, the mindset is just different. And 100%. Those are the people that's easier to help them get results versus mm -hmm. um, those, I mean, you could maybe around 80000 and you may yeah. be kind of there, but it still needs a lot of personal yeah. development. So, um, so it's not that you got to be making six figures to get a government contract. Yeah. It's just that. But just who you want to work with. Who I want to work well, with. I, I'm with yeah. you 100%. Okay, cool. Uh, so, yeah, I would definitely do that. So that way, they, so that way when the team are digging in, they can kind of prioritize them based on these revenue mm -hmm. standpoints. But, I mean, just the customers you got is, is a gold mine. <laughs> you already Thank know. Thank you. It's a gold mine. Yes. Cool. What else? That's it. Mm -hmm. So you got we got action steps. So what would you say if you would say top three action steps from this is what? Definitely create a follow up system mm -hmm. for um, outbound calls. Mm -hmm. Definitely segment the audience. Okay. And then also run the ads to the book funnels, the other funnels. The, re the retargeting, the, re the other funnels. Yep. The um the the other funnels, but also the retargeting ads. Okay. Yep. Okay. Perfect. And then let's and then I know you onboarding sales team Monday. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, and just keep, kind of like me and when Wes was talking, let's kind of just keep a tab on it week by week. And I just kind of be, cause I know you're doing management for now on the sales side, right? Yeah, wow. Well, yeah, okay. and I can just kind of serve as your extra set of eyes as we looking through and then seeing who we cut, who we bring on, mm -hmm. and what should that look like and how should okay. it perform. Sound good? Yep. All right, let's get it. <laughs> right. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, you want to do two things. Number one, click below this video and go ahead and subscribe so you'll be the first person to know when we release new episodes. And number two, you want to click right here so you can check out the next episode. I know you're going to love that one as well. So go ahead and subscribe right now and then click right here to check out this next episode. See you in a few.